The Baralong people are singing in the rain. It's not the best weather to be moving house, especially when the place you're moving to is a patch of open veldt without even a shack for the kids to shelter in. But this is the Baralong's traditional land. In 1973, their belongings were piled into government trucks and they were forcibly removed. The land is only a few kilometers out of Pochestrum in the heart of Afrikanerdom. For the apartheid government, it was a so-called black spot in country reserved for whites. Eventually, it was handed over to the local city council. But now, the Baralong are coming back for good. On behalf of the city council of Pochestrum, it gives me great pleasure whilst we're standing here and the skies are opening and giving us all the grace of God to hand now over officially this piece of land to you as the representative of the Department of Land Affairs. Thank you very much. Professor von der Berg. The Constitution says that there shall be restitution because a grave injustice was done to people and we, we simply have to do it. Most people in South Africa have supported the restitution process to the hilt. People recognize that um, shameful deeds were committed in the name of apartheid, and these have to be remedied. Yet even on this land, which everyone agrees once legally belonged to the Baralong people, agreement was only finally reached after the personal intervention of the federal minister. And there are thousands of such battles still to be fought between black claimants and the government on the one hand, and the present landowners on the other. It's not going to be simple, and it's not going to be quick. <laughs> Back in 1913, a group of 14 black families clubbed together to buy the Klipgat farm just north of Pochestrum. For half a century, they raised their cattle and grew their maize, lived and died here. But by the 1970s, only their gravestones were left. The living members of the families were forced off the farm and scattered to the homelands and the townships. Today, from the townships and the homelands, they're converging again on Klipgat. They've lodged their claim with the new land commission. Soon, they're convinced they'll be back on the farm to stay. Now, they're bringing the good news to the ancestors. We always pray and pray and pray and say, oh God, we wish one day we can go back because those people, it was their rightful place. They had a title deed for it, they bought it, and it's written in paper. Everything is reflected in their history. But Klipgat has another owner now. In 1980, Christoffel Momberg bought the farm from the state. It's marginal land, he says not enough rain at a tough, sour pasture. But he and his English wife battled to make a go of it. Now she's dead and he's prepared to leave, but only if the price is right. What I'd like to get across is that I've spent 15 years here. Everything that I have basically earned during that time, I've put back into the ground. But the bottom line is, I'm prepared to go, but if I go, I want to be compensated fully. If they're not prepared to do that, then we're going to have a fight on our hands. I'm not prepared to just go. Momberg makes no attempt to prevent the caravan of claimants' families from gathering on his land to visit the graves of their ancestors. He knows that when it comes to money, he won't be fighting them but the government. So when he meets them face to face for the first time, a wary courtesy prevails. This is Johannes Nappi, this is Mr. Mombo. Nice to meet you. I think you might be aware that uh, 
we are in the process of, uh, you know, claiming the land back and so on. They uh, have... I, I suspected you would try and claim it back, but then they've still got to negotiate with me before they can get yeah. that far. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you people have got the money to come and pay me, then it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it will be fair on us that we should take our money out because we had already bought the farm, you see, and it was taken and we are not compensated. At least you are you are in a better position because you are going to get some compensation. That's right. The question is, how much compensation? In the end, even if he isn't happy with what the government offers him, there may not be much that Momberg can do about it. If no acceptable negotiated settlement is found, then the matter would be referred to a land claims court which would be the adjudicating body. In that case, the Land Claims Court can order that the land be restored to the claiming community. Whether the, whether the present owner wants to sell or not? Whether the present owner wants to sell or not. Well, most probably they have got the power to force me off the property. But uh, it's going to be a long fight. I, I don't know exactly what we would do, but we would go uh, full out. I'd call in uh, everybody that I can to help me, and uh, we'd give them a good go and see how far we could get. There are fears that the whole process could bog down in the courts, or that the sheer cost of returning millions of people to the lands they once occupied will prove ruinously expensive. But the government has put strict limits on its generosity. Only those whose forebears once held legal title to the land under white law will qualify for restitution. Thanks to the foresight of the ancestors, the claimants at Klipgat are almost certain to have their land returned to them. But in some parts of the country, black farmers have never legally owned their ancestral lands and it's there that the problems are most intractable. <laughs> Sonia Kustas is marrying Bernd Schutter, and just about every farming family in a 50 kilometer radius is at Commondale Church for the ceremony. Der Friede des Herrn sei mit euch allen. Amen. It's a godly and prosperous community, bound together by its Lutheran faith and German heritage. Fifty years ago, they built the church with their own hands, a little patch of Saxony in the African veldt. But German missionaries and farmers first trekked into the southeast Transvaal a long time before that. I reckon that was around about the 1850s. So they're about 130 plus years in this area. And what, who was living on, on the land at the time they came? According to the elder people, they say that uh, from here, from Commondale to, to, to the east, that was malaria area. And there were no, no people around here. As the German farmers tell it, the Zulus who live here now were invited in from Natal in the south to work on the white farms. Instead of cash wages, they were given land to build their crawls and plant their maize and the right to graze their cattle on the white man's pasture. But these days, the real money is in timber. The pasture the farmers keep for their workers' cattle is land that could be planted with still more trees. The old labor tenant system, the landowners say, just doesn't fit with the needs of a modern commercial operation. I think that's a more feudal system, and, and, and that has been proved uh, everywhere that, that that isn't a good system. So what is the system that the white farmers would prefer to have here? would like to have fully employed people. 
So in recent years, thousands of Labour tenants have been forced to leave the land they've lived on for generations. Mishak and Gilbert Mavimbela claim that their family has lived at Mantonga since before the German settlers even came to the Transvaal. I hear this history from my father. As my father told by his father, as his father told by his father, I don't know where it started from, but I know that they were here since the whites were not here. But it's the white farmer who legally owns the land. Now, when the Mavimbelas return to clear the weeds from their ancestral graveyard, they're trespassing. Seven years ago, a Mr. Klingenberg bought Mantonga from its previous white owner. Right from the start, it was clear that he wanted the Mavimbelas off the farm. For two years, they tried to stave off eviction. This one. This is a, a room. And the other side is a, a room. And a tire. Then one day in 1990, Mishak arrived back at the crawl to find two men with bulldozers, one white, one black, methodically demolishing the houses that had been home for more than 60 people. I was stopping the whites. I'm asking the question, some questions. What are you doing here? He said to me, is the uh, owner of the farm, he harassed him to demolish all the houses down. So they knocked down yes, every house? Yes, they knocked down uh, every house. And our Even our was finishers, inside. materials, our everything were inside. And you, okay. had, you had no warning that this was going to happen? No, no. it didn't get anything. We, we, we just know that we are living here. So we just go to it's just the, the same old story, say the Mavimbela brothers. We are the blacks. The whites do what he like to us. He follow their instructions. If he said something, we must respect him. But Mr. Mandela is the president now. Things should be different, shouldn't they? It is so. Although things are not all right, as from today. And that, says old Jotham Zwane, the Mavimbela's family friend and an ANC activist from way back, is the worst of it. After a full year of the new government, the evictions are still going on. Many, many people, even now, they still push them off. Even now? Even now. I think in certain parts of the country, it's, it's perfectly true. Things have got worse. People have, uh, farmers have been evicting uh, labor tenants, and in certain cases evicting uh, farm workers from their land using existing legislation. But we're tackling it head on, and we're saying that we, we believe there has to be strong protective legislation to pre prevent further evictions. Meanwhile, many blacks believe the white farmers are getting rid of their labor tenants while they still can. Among the guests at Bernd and Sonja's wedding, we found Helmut and Imgart Klingenberg. But Mr. Klingenberg refused to talk to us about his treatment of the Mavimbelas. The community's chief spokesman, Hori Hinza, wouldn't discuss the Mavimbelas either. But he told us that in general, the evictions could be blamed not on the farmers, but on black activists. Tension is building up because there are people and organizations who create false hopes by people. They come and tell them, listen, hold on to the land. You don't have to work for, for the landowner anymore. Whatever the reason, this is where people like the Mavimbelas end up, in squalid rural townships like Kwatandeka, a hundred kilometers north of Mantonga. <laughs> There's no running water, no electricity, no sewerage, no garbage disposal, and no work. Yet somehow, 15 little Mavimbelas have to be fed and clothed and sent to school. They'd hoped and expected that the new government would force Mr. Klingenberg to let them return to Mantonga. 
Now they're gradually realizing that without legal title to the land, the best they can hope for from the government is the offer of land elsewhere. We recognize historical claims to land, but we felt it was necessary to strictly define who qualifies and who doesn't. And clearly, uh, you cannot, cannot allow everybody, um, everybody who lost their land as a result of some law or another, to go back to their original land. If the Labour tenants are not allowed to go back on their land by the new law, mm. what do you think the reaction of people here will be? I think the people will fight in much concerning of that. They will fight? They will fight against the government. Against the farmers or against the government? I think against the government. To turn the clock back half a century and put back together what apartheid tore asunder won't be easy. There'll be many who lose out. But there will be winners too. For all the problems, for most black South Africans, this is still a time of hope and expectation. All over the nation, the scattered children are returning to their ancestors and to the land in which they lie. <laughs>